Well, welcome back to Sonora Spring Zoo, everyone. Hope you guys are all having one of the most wonderful, wonderful days. My name is Leaf, and it's so great to bring you guys back in here for a very fun speed build. So, I kind of put this one off for a little bit because I really wasn't feeling it too much. But I think I finally got the inspiration needed to really tackle it. So I hope you guys are very excited for it. Today we are working on our meerkat exhibit. So I put this one off for a little bit because I really want to start building for the DLC animals. But ever since my kind of, you know, hype for them has kind of died down, I still enjoy them. Don't get me wrong. I just, I'm not really gunning to build another emu habitat. You'll have another speed build of that relatively soon. But ever since my hype for that kind of died down, I was like, okay, uh, I think I could finally build for the meerkats now. I really want to work my way up through the zoo and start making these habitats and really kind of trying to flesh out the zoo, if that makes sense. So you can see I am putting some pathing all the way throughout here. This habitat was awful to build. <laughs> it was such a challenge. It was only about like an hour's worth of work but it was just such a hassle just trying to get all these pieces to work together uh but that's kind of the challenge that i enjoy for these small habitats so i hope you guys are excited so my idea was to have this kind of you know mountainside looking up into a habitat meanwhile you can take this little pathway inside here that's why i keep on throwing guests in there as a way to get a little bit more personal and a little bit more up close with said meerkats so from here i use the i use this little rock set uh which is officially on the workshop right now you guys can go check that out but i essentially use that and kind of mark out where i want the guest path to be and where i need to build above in terms of you know where the meerkats will be able to cross over uh, so you can see we're working with a very narrow area which is totally fine because meerkats they don't really require a lot of space uh, that's one of the reasons why I do like building for these guys so much. It's just I always get to change it out with the layout and stuff and really do some really funky things at the cost of, you know, not really infringing upon their habitat, which I think is always super fun. So I have this area over here in case of, you know, you're a little claustrophobic. Maybe you have like some guests that really don't want to go in some cramped areas or they can't really access those cramped areas. Uh, obviously, if you're in a wheelchair, you really wouldn't be able to make your way into that little area back there, but you still get an incredible view from the front, which is all, you know, as long as you get good views for people, that's all that really matters. So I have that working out over there, and I also do a very simple viewing gallery over here, just classic uh, modern glass panels, and also highlighting it a little bit with um, those Africa plaster uh, bricks uh, just as a way to help it feel nice and clean so what I also do throughout here is use these mud walls once again uh, really do love using these guys so much they're just super easy to use except for the fact that it does get a little bit too cramped in there so I do fix that up in a little bit but I kind of line the outside of the habitat just a smidge more as a way to help it feel a little bit more cohesive within, like, you know, the greater atmosphere of the zoo. So I use the stalactite rocks, and these guys are incredible for getting these nice organic uh, kind of shapes, colors, sizes, uh, and just general, I, I don't know, vibes, if that makes sense. And I also use just a smidge of real terrain in here. Uh, obviously, since I'm working with pathing in there, I'm not really able to do my best work in here. Uh, obviously, if we had, like, you know, placeable sand tiles or something like that, it would be so much easier. But unfortunately, those aren't in Planet Zoo. Uh, so I really had to make do with whatever I had at available, if that makes sense. I don't even know if it does. But you can see throughout here, I am just adjusting the height of the habitat just to account for, you know escapes uh i tried my best to make this habitat as realistic as possible by taking into account where the meerkats could get out where the meerkats would be able to escape and i think i covered all the bases relatively well i think there's just still a few areas where they might be able to but again as i said in the tour video from before that's something i'm gonna go throughout and kind of fix up on my own time uh, apart from speed build because a lot of that stuff is very concise and i 
don't really want to waste your guys' time by watching me do something, delete it, do something, delete it. Uh, I usually save those for my own building time. What I also do throughout here is kind of make this area inside a little bit more uh, built up. Uh, a lot of the times you're not really building for the habitat itself, so you can oftentimes use these cheaper materials. So in this case, it's those plaster panels. And I apologize if you hear my dog barking in the background. She is nonstop today. But you can see I'm adding a little bit of terrain paints in here. I don't really keep any grass in there too much because it really doesn't make too much sense. But I do add like the drain grasses and other foliage in here in a little bit. So you'll see that all come into play once I actually do get the layout all set. Uh, but you can see the top of the habitat is looking very fine. Uh, I really do like working with those organic curves. Just as a way to help you feel like you're in a canyon or something. It always does feel super fun just working in that regard. Uh, and I also do some stuff with the desert rock cladding. Uh, this is super fun to work with, especially when I'm working with these nice cave systems. Unfortunately, the stalactite rocks, they don't really work too well. <laughs> because there's a whole like point to them. Uh, and quite literally, that point is a point. It's supposed to be a stalactite. It's not supposed to be like, you know, a mud rock wall or something. So we have to make do with that. Uh, but I think it blends in very well. We were able to kind of color match this beforehand so that the stalactite rocks actually match with the desert rocks. So I think that all works out relatively well. But you can see I also get to work over here just trying to make these glass panels kind of fit a little bit better. Uh, but I really wasn't feeling that at first. But then I remembered that the cladding exists. Uh, like the long kind of like tuby pieces of rock so I was able to use a little bit of those throughout here and yeah they just really help set the scene a lot more uh, what I also do over here is just add these big walls back here I think I do want to add some decorations to the top of that back when I you know when I get back into Sonora Spring Zoo I think I want to do a habitat or two before I leave uh, just so you guys actually have some stuff to you know watch um, but I think I do want to get back in there play around with a little bit more detailing in here maybe do a little bit of education on how meerkats kind of like survive in the wild how their dens are made up and comprised yada 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 I feel like that'd be super fun to do but of course I gotta wait a little bit on that and I will have a guest builder in here just to handle a lot more of the infrastructure <clears throat> in just a little bit uh, he should be having the map relatively soon uh, I think I think I should probably send him tomorrow or something, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just super excited to get that kind of help because it concerns infrastructure that I don't really know too much about, but he definitely does. So we'll see when we get to that point, but you can see I really wanted to have that um, kind of cave have this nice flat top to it as a way to not only keep the guests feeling like they're going into like a nice concrete area, but also keep the meerkats out from you know, jumping out or something like that. Uh, again, we're really limited in what we can do in terms of uh, making sure that they're not able to escape, uh, but I think I kind of nailed it pretty well. So if you guys see anything that's askew, please let me know. Anything that concerns realism, please just let me know in the comments <laughs> because I'm going to need that because that's a goal I want for Sonora Springs. I want it to feel a lot more realistic than my other zoos. Take into account like a whole bunch of other elements of realism that I really haven't been dealing with before. So that's something I really do want to focus on later down the line, of course. Uh, but you can see I am just getting to work on the out outside exterior of the habitat, just making sure it all flows nicely. And I should probably go back and kind of decorate a little bit further beyond that, just to give it a little bit more depth in terms of the habitat, because you just see that first layer of plants and then that's it. I should probably add some trees behind that just to help it feel a little bit better. Uh, I also decorate that small area over to the left over there with a little bit of plants. I think I just throw like some cactuses, cacti in there uh, just as a way to help it feel 
I don't know, like it's in use a little bit, but also not in use because you oftentimes in zoos have those dead areas where there's not really much going on except for a few plants. And those I feel like a lot of people should start to do because it's really fun just to be able to get those kind of inoperable areas. Let's just say, for example, you have pipelines running through some areas. Uh, you wouldn't put a habitat there because habitats require oftentimes a little bit of digging down into the ground. But oftentimes gardens don't, so that's oftentimes what you would see in those areas where they're not really able to manipulate it all that much. Uh, also adding the drain grass to the top of these habitats just to help it feel like, you know, it's a little bit more organic, it's a little bit more built into the landscape. And yeah, it just helps give this really beautiful effect when all is said and done. I don't know, I really do like it. And I hope you guys do too, because this was a super fun habitat to make. And it was a super fun habitat just to watch the people explore in. I just thought that was super fun. And I was like, okay, but you know what, I need some shades in here. Uh, just to help it feel like... I don't know. Again, we're in the desert. We're in the Sonora Desert of California, Southern California. We gotta make sure that that heat isn't gonna, you know, take a turn for the worse for anyone. So we gotta add as much shade as possible wherever we can, wherever it makes sense. And also adding some of these decals I made beforehand. Uh, I should probably release these on the workshop because they're super useful. But yeah, that's pretty much it for our speed build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little meerkat habitat speed build. It was super fun just to build for these guys. Once again, I know I built for them many times before, but it's always fun just to pop back in here and build for them again. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best. Be sure to check out the vi the rest of the channel. Jeez. Uh, sorry. For any other Sonora Springs videos, as well as all my other videos. I'll take, I'll take off now. Okay. Because I'm starting to start in my words. Have the most wonderful of wonderful days. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.